Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So, in this video, I am going to talk about Vera Quea. And she's a very interesting hero, but I'm going to say right from the start, right now, that I can't really recommend using her in general, because I just don't really see the point. Okay? And the reason I don't see the point is because if you have Bozal and Lana for your ranged attackers, I see very little reason to build up a third ranged attacker, Ferroquea, right? And, you know, if you have Zerida, Zerida is better for PvP than Ferroquea is. So, she seems like she's doesn't really have a role in the game if you have a lot of the SSRs already. Now, if you're playing Dark and, you know, you don't have Lana and Bozal and so on, then you might consider building up Ferroquea at that point. But, uh, yeah. So, basically, interesting character, but I don't see the point in building her. In any case, I'm going to talk about how you would build her if you decide to uh, level her up and so on. Alright, so, Ferroquea is really defined by her talent, Morph. Because what it allows her to do is, when attacking, hero will be transformed into the same unit type as the enemy hero. And if the unit transformation occurs on this turn, you're granted one more action, and attack is increased by a certain percentage. This lasts one turn, and there is a four turn cooldown on this skill. Okay? Now, if, you're, if your Ferroquea is at four stars, the cooldown on this skill is decreased to a three turn interval. And then if you manage to hit six stars on Ferroquea, the cooldown on this uh, morph skill is reduced to two turns. So in that sense, it is kind of like Cherry, right? It goes from four turns to three turns to two turns. All right. Uh, in terms of the attack increase percentage, that also increases the higher star value Ferroquea is at. So it starts at 5%, goes up to 10% at three stars, 15% at four stars, 20% at five stars, and then it becomes a 25% attack increase at six stars. So, yeah, I mean, you attack, then you get a second attack with 25% more attack. It's a very, very powerful skill. Now, let's talk about her classes then. Her classes right now is Shapeshifter, Wraith Queen, Ninja, Archmage. She also eventually gets a second class off the Ninja branch, okay? So uh, she'll stay as an Assassin class as opposed to being demon. And she gets, I f from what I remember, she gets another attack skill, which is, as opposed to this one, which is 1.2 times damage, that skill does 1.4 times damage. However, whereas Maneuver has a 3 range attack, that skill has only 2 range. Nonetheless, you know, 1.4 times damage, it's quite useful. So... Yeah, um, in terms of using Ferroquea, if you were to use her, I think currently her best skill combination would be you absolutely need Sly Stride, okay? Because after eliminating an enemy, you get a chance to move three blocks. So that's a must-have for her, for the one-point skill. And then for her two-point skills, I would say you definitely want Maneuver for one of them, the two-point skills. And then currently, I would say the other skill you probably want would be Attack Intimidate. Okay? And so the way this would work is, with this kind of build on Ferroquea, you would move up and then use the Maneuver Attack, right? Maneuver Attack will... Uh, if this attack is not guarded by a Lancer or whatever tank, it swaps your position with the target, right? So you guys get swapped, and then because of the swap, your attack defense, your attack intimidate will kick in, reducing the attack of all the enemy, all the enemies within two blocks by 15%. And then after the, that, your morph will kick in, right? So then you can get move and do a second attack, probably finish off finishing off that target that you swap with, and then your slide stride would kick in after you kill off that enemy and let you retreat three tiles away. So that would be, I guess, her best PvE combination right now, right? Move up, use Maneuver. 
swapped positions, debuff the enemies. Second attack, kill off that enemy, and then slice strike to run away. Unfortunately though, doing this combination needs a rune stone. So that's one of the reasons why I find I don't really recommend using Fair Aquea, because you have to commit a rune stone into using her. Um, the other reason I don't really, really recommend using Fair Aquea is because I personally don't see the need for a ranged physical attacker that attacks twice. You know, if you were to use like a physical attacker, normally you want them to be melee physical attackers, normally speaking anyways. And in that case, you're better off using Cherry, right? Because Cherry would attack and then hopefully Wild Princess activates and you get a second attack or you can retreat. So yeah, in any case, so that's I guess the best uh, skill combination for Fair Aquea at this time. It may change when that new branch is unlocked, right? In that case, if with that new branch unlocked, you might want to do two attack skills, right? Let's say Plunder and that 1.4 times attack skill. Or whatever your choice may be. So, yeah, that pretty much covers, I guess, her skills. You really don't want Archmage, because Magic Defense Intimidate is honestly rather useless. You know? Reinforcements could sometimes replace Sly Stride, but uh, yeah. It's something to take into account. Reinforcements would be if you take if you attack, take damage. Reinforcements would kick in to heal you up a bit for your second attack. All right, so those are her main skills and talents. All right, so let's talk about her soldiers. And soldiers-wise, it's quite interesting. Uh, her three soldiers from the training ground are Hellfire Archers, the demon unit, sorceresses and Leviathans. Generally speaking, I would say just because most people already have sources leveled up, that would be most likely the unit you would use rather than Hellfire Archers and Leviathans. But yeah, so those are her soldiers. And then in terms of other soldiers that she gets, right? Well, let's bring back her uh, her classes. You can see here that she gets access to bandits and dark elf snipers. So, are either really really good? I mean, if you have them leveled up, you should certainly use you know dark elf snipers or bandits. But I think the most likely situation would be you already have sources is leveled up and you'll be using those instead of the other options. All right, so that's our soldiers. In terms of her hero boost, okay, by default she gives 10% hit points, 5% attack, and 10% magic defense. So her soldiers gets a lot of hit points and magic defense, which is kind of an odd combo. Um, and then if I bring up her bonds page, all right. Her bo her third bond, which boosts soldiers, boosts hit points and magic defense. So they don't. It does not boost attack on those soldiers. So they don't. You know, they're tough. They can take. Uh, they can absorb hits, but they don't really hit that hard due to the lack of. They're missing plus fifteen percent attack basically. So in terms of attack value, this really just means that Fairquea is not exactly absolute top tier. Of course, the flip side is Fairquea gets two attacks when she attacks due to morph. So that does definitely help a lot. Alright, so that pretty much covers her soldiers and really everything I really wanted to say about her. Um, you know, the reason why I don't think she's a great PvP character is because of her movement. It's that it's three, right? PvP, especially World Arena, is very heavily defined by how far your characters can move. That is why, you know, Leon is so amazing, because he has chivalry. That is why Cherry is amazing, because 
she only has 5 movement, but she has the ability to get Shadow Raid, which effectively means she can attack 6 tiles away, not 5, right? And then that is why, for example, the new hero, Randius or Landius, or whatever you want to call him, is such a great tank, because he can be a Calvary tank. So he has 5 movements, and he can move up 5 distance and then protect characters. And finally, yeah, that's why, you know, characters like uh, Bozel with 4 movement, with speed boots, um, Zerida, who will get a huge movement boost from her talent at high, at uh, higher star levels, are also great in PvP, because movement is honestly king in the world arena. So, because Feraquea has the regular 3 movement, you know, it's hard for her to get into the combat range. And that's why she's not a great PvP hero. And in terms of PvE, because of Sly Stride requiring one runestone, I can't really recommend her right now. You know? When she gets her second ninja class, you know, if you go from morph to ninja to that second class, so that she has Sly Stride and then two attack skills, and then the option of using reinforcements, then I would definitely recommend her for PvE. You know? She would be a decent PvE character, and you don't have to commit any runestones into her to make her useful. Alright, so that's pretty much what I wanted to say about her. In terms of equipment, I'm honestly not sure if her ninja class can equip, you know, demon items or not. In any case though, uh, regardless, she's really about physical attack, not intelligence, right? So you would really want to just equip physical attack items, which means, well, for example, a bow, right? Uller's bow would give her an extra range, you know, otherwise you would want extreme magic bow ideally. If you don't have an extreme magic bow, you can use like, you know, bloody melody or whatever other bow that you have, right? So, because ultimately, oh. Feraquea is about doing two attacks to kill off the opponent. Um, even in that sense, even Windcutter Dagger would help in reducing the damage she takes if she's attacking an enemy ranged character. But if she's attacking melee characters, you're not taking any damage, so that would not be useful. Uh, really though, I mean, because of her attack and retreat style, right, due to Sly Stride, you would generally be protected after your attacks. So, you know, for example, items like Monkey King's Vest would not be that useful, because you're not expecting to be attacked, right? Same with Loki's Mask, not that useful, because it would only provide attack boost when you're melee attacked, right? So basically your priority would be just two items that both increase her attack dramatically so that she can attack twice and then retreat. Uh, in terms of armor and helmet, not a huge priority in my opinion. So you know, whatever you have that you think is good would work for her. That's what I would say. You know, so I would say that, um, what is it? If you get, she would actually be pretty good with last rights because for PVE content, right, last rights would reduce the first time you take damage by a certain percentage, so that would keep her healthy for her second attack with more. So probably last rights would be her best armor, if you have yet another copy of it. You know, I know last rights is very rare. I don't even have one at this time, so. Yeah, that would probably be her best armor. And then in terms of helmets... I'm honestly not sure. <laughs> um, maybe... Something like King's Crown, because... You know, that way she's gonna provide a buff for an ally after she retreats back. Yeah. I'm honestly not sure, in terms of the helmet. It could... or something like this would also work, the Dromengandir's Eye, because you would attack and have a chance to decrease the enemy damage dealt, right, for your second attack. So yeah, probably Dromengandir's Eye would be a great one, you know, you can use 
performer mask as well, if you don't have a drumming gun dear side. So yeah, there's in terms of helmet, she's fairly versatile there. And then, then of course, the attack and attack accessories, you want max attack. Plus attack, plus attack for both. Weapon-wise, you know, could be Extreme Magic Bow, it could be Hydra Bloody Melody, it could be Uller's Bow, up to you. Alright, so that's everything I wanted to say about Ferroquia in terms of equipment and in terms of, you know, her soldiers and her class and so on. I hope you found this information useful. Um, like I said, on the whole, I don't really recommend building her up right now. No, probably when she gets her second class, definitely build her up. As it is, you know, if you're going up more Shapeshifter and then Wraith Queen, then you're using, really, Maneuver, right, Reinforcements, and then probably a second attack skill, rather than Attack Intimidate. You could do Maneuver and Attack Intimidate, so that is another option too, but yeah. The re but yeah, that pretty much sums it up. So... Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful. And yeah. Nitro out.